So the basis of this build was to make three cutting boards. Um, the lumber for this was uh, lumber that was kept from a tree that was being cut down and it was kept for sentimental purposes. So originally the customer wanted a more traditional style cutting board that would have been edge grain or, or end grain, but the three trunks are all about this size and they wanted three boards. So there was no way to get enough lumber for all of those pieces. So we came up with an ideal of cutting this into biscuits and using it that way to make an end grain cutting board but keeping the circle. Um, and this is going to be the process for doing that. So I had video of taking the bark off, but I lost it. Um, I actually made these boards right before Christmas. So um, some of the, the footage is a little bit older, but basically I just went through and smoothed these out as best I could because I knew that um, in order for this, the way I wanted to build this to work, it would, it would work easiest if the edges were as smooth as possible. So in order to slice these down, this build in general would have been much easier with a bandsaw, but I don't have a bandsaw. So I made this cradle out of some scrap wood. It's basically just two pieces of plywood on a 45, and then um, another piece of plywood screwed to the ends to hold it all together. And the one side will run against my table saw fence, and I'll be able to slice biscuits. I just threw a couple screws in there. Um, once I was done with this, I was going to throw it out. I put a flat piece in front so I could screw attach it to my miter gauge and then use the miter gauge and the fence to cut it. So I started out by evening off the edges because they weren't square and you could see that I have this jig situated about an inch and a half off of my fence. So each biscuit will be about an inch and a half thick. I think they were a little bit thicker because I knew I was going to lose some material um, when I had to plane it down. So once I got the edge flat, basically what I'm doing is making sure the new flat edge of the piece sits flush against that half inch piece of plywood as well as um, I could get it. It wasn't going to be perfect, but I wanted these to be pretty close to flat and similar sizes. So you could see because the logs are not perfectly straight, whenever there's a hook or something, I had to use a little bit of a shim in order to get everything done. These logs are also about four inches wide, four to four and a half inches wide. So usually I had to do a little bit of hand sawing in order to completely go through the piece because um, just the way that the jig was made and how I couldn't have it flat, the saw usually didn't cut all the way through. But you could see it was just a matter of going through and doing that. And since I needed as much wood as possible, I cut these down to the last nub so I would use a little bit of a shim in order to get that last cut. And like I said, hand saw those pieces apart. And then these are all the biscuits I'm left with. I ended up with about nine per board. So when I was coming up with this design, I sent the customer kind of an original um, demo piece made from smaller logs without the solid knot in the middle and they were easier to cut. So when I first started this, I used a chisel because that's what I used on the smaller logs and it worked really well. I was chiseling out the material because these are going to have to fit together perfectly in order to make a flat surface without any cracks or checks. So you could see I'm transferring part of that curve onto the original piece and then I made sure to label top and bottom because it's so easy to flip stuff like this around and not know bottom from top as you're going. So then once I had my marks, the first one around, like I said, I would chisel out. And this worked well until I got to the knot. Um, the knot is just going to kind of break however it wants to. It wasn't breaking cleanly. So after this first one, I started um, using a jigsaw. But I wanted to keep showing using the chisel in it in case you don't have a lot of tools. It will take longer, but you can do this um, just with chisels. And then obviously, like I said before, ideally a bandsaw would have been the perfect tool for this job, but I just don't have one. So I would follow my marks, work my way around the piece and take out that material and then um, fit it back together. Now, 
there was a lot of, of marking, measuring, taking off incremental bits and going back and forth for each piece. This was a very long process and it was made longer by the fact that I decided I wanted to make it two-sided. So to make the process easier, you can make it one-sided and then do a solid bottom, cover it with a solid bottom, and then you don't have to worry about gaps on the other side. But I wanted it to be a two-sided piece. I didn't want to hide the lumber, especially because it was important to the customer. So by making it two-sided, you have to make sure that the gap does not go through on either, either side. Once I had it together, I could put glue on it, and then for this whole build, I um, used rubber bands to hold all the pieces together. I was able to use regular size rubber bands in the beginning, and towards the end, I actually bought some black rubber bands off Amazon. I think they were like $10 for a whole pack. So now that you see how I did it with the chisel, I'm going to show you how I ended up doing the rest of them, um, the method I had for, for building those. So I'm about three in on this, and I picked the easiest parts to cut, so I kind of would look at them in the beginning, and since I'm making three different boards, I, I numbered every one. So I would mark on the piece that I'm using where I'm, where I'm going to be um, evening out the edges. So I would clean up the edges so they were as uh, perfectly square as possible. If there's any undulations in the edge from the top to the bottom, you would really run into trouble. Then I retransferred my marks onto my piece, and then I could mark the curve on the piece as well, now that that one piece is flat. And then I would jigsaw those out. So the jigsaw doesn't leave a perfect cut, so I would cut just shy of my, of my line, pretty much right up to the line. And then I could go through and just fine tune it. So you can see it fits pretty good off the right off the jigsaw but there's um, a little bit of cleanup to do. So there's some high spots, there's some low spots. A lot of that was just because um, the surface of the board now is not perfectly flat. So the, the, the foot plate of the jigsaw would kind of ride on hills and valleys in the piece. So then I would use a, a combination of the edge of this sander to clean up the inner curve as well as a chisel to clean it up. And it was just a matter of fitting it, taking a little bit off, fitting it again, and a lot of the times, the nice part was the wood would leave kind of rub marks. So if you if you put the piece together and took it apart, you could see where it was hitting and just remove material. Then I would go through and put a little shallow channel right through the middle of the piece. And that would make it easier to do fine tune adjustments because you're not removing all of that thick material. You're just removing um, from the top and the bottom. So you could see, once again, just fine-tuning that piece. I knew there was going to be gaps and there are some cracks in the wood itself, but I wanted there to be um, as minimal uh, cracks as possible. So then, once again, I could glue it together. Now, I um, told the customer before I did this that one issue with this sort of construction is going to be the fact that you potentially will still have these pieces checking over time. It's almost a given you'll get some, still get some cracking in these pieces. But they told me the tree that was used for these logs was cut down four or five years ago, which means that the wood itself, which is about four inches thick, should be fairly dry at this point or, or close enough to its equilibrium that I shouldn't have to worry about too much of, crack, of the cracking but I wanted to make sure the customer was aware of the fact that that could be an issue. So I've been piecing all of these um, biscuits together and you can see there are a couple little um, gaps along the way, but in general they came together really well. Um, it will be easy to fill these little holes as well as kind of the cracks still in the board. But since I only had a certain amount of biscuits, you could kind of see from the Sharpie outline I drew that in order to square this up, I would lose a fair amount of material and these boards would actually get kind of small. So what I've been doing is, you could see by the pencil mark, is I've been adding material um, up here. I will do it as well. You could see where the pencil would cut. Adding material into these kind of V grooves, um, this one, I would add them here so that I'm easily gaining over an inch in almost all dimensions. 
It's a little bit of a tedious process, but it's easier than um, putting these together, and it really is the same process. I'm just adding littler nuggets. So I already did the other two, so you could see these are the little nuggets I've been adding. These aren't glued together yet, but you could see from there how instead of losing over an inch in each dimension, I'm going to be keeping them about the same size as they are when I square them up. I did this one as well. So I'm going to show you how I'm doing it on this one. I'm going to finish this one up and then I can glue these all together. So I'm going to go through this pretty quickly because like I said, it's, it's pretty much the same exact process. Um, I was taking a little chunk and the chunks are the leftover pieces that I originally cut out with the jigsaw. So I saved them and they ended up working out for putting on these edges because I didn't know if I was going to have to add material to it. Um, ideally, if I had 12 pieces, I think these would have been a perfect size. So then I could go through and um, just use my chisel to clean up the piece. You could tell from the jigsaw, at least my jigsaw, it doesn't leave a, a perfectly perpendicular cut. So I could just go through and clean that up easy with the chisel. I would glue, uh, hold them in place with some blue tape and then move on to the next one. I utilized rafts and files throughout this entire process as well. So then, like I said, it's just a matter of going back and forth and fitting the pieces. And then um, I glued the, all these in just by using rubber bands across two and then across two going the other way so I could hold them in place. And then the inner portion of these boards are done. There's going to be an outer frame to them, which is going to be in the second video. Um, this was one of those weird videos where it was a little too long to make it one video, but now um, the material is, is kind of short for the two part series that it's going to be. But this is this is where I'm going to leave it for here.